Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Aditya. Welcome to the series FMG High Yield. So the topic for today is going to be Glasgow Coma Scale. Well, first of all, what is Glasgow Coma Scale? Glasgow Coma Scale is used to describe the level of consciousness of patients with traumatic brain injury. So that's where we use the Glasgow Coma Scale. So when we say Glasgow Coma Scale, there are three main components to it. Let's look at them one by one. First of all, we evaluate these specific responses, these three specific responses, that is eye-opening response, verbal response, and motor response of the patient. And we give a certain score to each of these responses. So now, first of all, let's look at the eye-opening response. Let's say the patient opens his eye spontaneously. Then we give him a score of four. If the patient is opening his eye, only when you speak to him, then we give him a score of so the patient is opening his eye not to even your speech so you're going to give him some pain stimulus and then he's opening your, opening his eye then we give him a score of 2 even though we give him pain, pain stimulus still he is not opening his eye he is unable to open his eye it means that no response so we give him a score of 1 so that's it with the eye opening response now let's look at the verbal response of the patient. That is, when we talk to the patient, the patient has a proper orientation to the time, person and place. That is, he knows who he is and where he is and he has a clear orientation when he speaks. Then we give him a score of 5. If the patient is talking in a very confused manner, then we give him a score of 4. The patient is unable to form clear sentences and he is talking inappropriate words. Then we give him a score of 3 and then he's unable to even utter words. He's just making some incomprehensible sounds. Then we give him a score of 2 and then finally he's unable to make any response at all. Then we give him a score of 1. Then comes the final response that we are evaluating that is motor response. When we say motor response, we predominantly mean that the patient's hand and leg movements so let's say you ask the patient you give you give the patient some commands some simple commands to move his legs or arms and he's obeying to your command and is able to do that then we give him a score of six then if he's not if he's unable to follow your command then you give him a pain stimulus let's say a central pain stimulus and uh, let's pinch him over his shoulder then he moves his arm towards the localizing pain. That means he is moving, he is able to identify the pain and he is moving his arm towards the pain. Then we give him a score of 5. Then next, nextly, we give him the same pain stimulus, and the patient is actually flexing, flexing his arm to withdraw from the pain. That is, he's flexing his arm so that his arm is moving away from the pain and away from the body. That is, he's fixing to withdraw from the pain and to that, we give him a score of 4. Then, there is abnormal flexion. Abnormal flexion in the sense, you give him the same pain stimulus, the same pinch on the shoulder. But this time, the person is bending his arm slowly and moving his arm slowly across the body. That is an abnormal flexion. So, to that, we give him a score of 3. Then, again, to the same central pain stimulus, to the same pinch over the shoulder, the person is extending his arm, he is extending his elbow slowly. That is called as an abnormal extension and to that abnormal extension, we give him a score of 2. Then finally, no matter how much of a pain stimuli that we, that we give, but the patient is unable to make any response. That is, he is unable to move his limbs. Then we give him a score of 1. And thus, we covered the three important responses that the Glasgow Coma Scale evaluates. But you have to know that there is a recent development in the Glasgow Coma Scale to which they have also added the Pupil Reactivity Score. So what is Pupil Reactivity Score? We actually introduce a light stimulus to the patient's eyes, to both his eyes. And if both his eyes are reactive to the light stimulus, we give a score of 0. If the patient's one eye is reactive and the other eye is unreactive, we give him a score of 1. 
If both his eyes are unreactive to the light stimulus, then you give him a score of 2. So this is a recent development and let's see how we evaluate the total GCS score. That is the total Glasgow Coma Scale score. So there is this formula called as E plus V plus M minus PR, that is pupil reactivity score. E means eye opening response plus verbal opening res plus verbal response plus motor response minus the pupil reactivity score. So let's just take an example. All right. The example where the, per the person is making no response when it comes to eye opening. So one, then he has one verbal response and one motor response score. Then the patient is also unable to, he is unreactive to light stimulus. Both his eyes are being unreactive. So we give him a score of 2. This is just an example. And so the score is going to be 3 minus 2, which is going to be 1. And just remember that 1 is the worst possible GCS score. It is the worst possible GCS score. It is not, it is not 0. It is 1. So you all should be knowing by now what is the best possible GCS score. It is obviously 15. So the worst possible score being 1 and the best possible score being 15. So as we have evaluated these scores, I just wanted to know what is the significance of these scores. Let's say that the patient's GCS score is, it lies between 13 to 15. It means that the person, that the patient has sustained that the patient has sustained minor brain injury. Let's suppose the score is between 9 to 12. It means the person has sustained a moderate brain injury. So let's say the score is less than 8. It means that the person has sustained severe brain injury. So this is the significance of each of these scores. And based on these scores, the patient's treatment modality varies. So thank you for watching. I hope that you all have understood what GCS score is and what are the components of it and what is the latest development and how you calculate a GCS score and what is the significance of each of these scores. Hope you got a clear idea. Thank you for watching.